In this video, I want to try and refute the Muslim claim that Muhammad is mentioned in the Torah. In the Quran, it specifically says that Muhammad is mentioned in the Torah. And Muslims all over the world honestly believe that Muhammad is mentioned in our Bible, in the Torah. And when you ask them where, they say Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. And in this video, I want to try and refute that claim. But I want to be fair, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a video of a Muslim scholar by the name of Zakir Naik making his case from Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18. And as we go along, I'm going to pause and show you why I think he's wrong. Now that's as fair as I can be. If Zakir Naik wants to come on the channel and debate me about this, he's more than welcome to do so. And if you're a Muslim watching this or you know a Muslim who's willing to debate me, who's got an audience at least as large as mine, then I am willing to debate that person as well. Let's get right into it. Let's begin with this clip from Dr. Zakia Naik. If you read the Old Testament, it's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, Almighty God says, I shall raise them for profit from among thy brethren, like unto thee, and I shall put my words into his mouth, and he shall speak all that I command him. This prophecy which is mentioned in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, Almighty God speaks to Moses, peace be upon him, and says, I shall raise them for profit from among thy brethren, like unto thee, and I shall put my words into his mouth, and he shall speak all that I command him. Okay, I think I can agree with Zachary and Ike so far. The passage does say that Yahweh is going to send a prophet. This prophet will come from among the brethren of Israel, so among the 12 tribes of Israel that come from the 12 uh, sons of Jacob. And it says here that this prophet will be like... Moses, okay? It seems pretty clear. That seems to be a pretty good prophecy. I, I would point out a couple of things. First of all, verse 17 says it's Yahweh speaking. Uh, your translation, if you're reading in the King James, might have Lord in caps. That's the name Yahweh. And also in verse 19, it says that this prophet will speak in Yahweh's name. So we've got a prophet that's going to come uh, that's sent by Yahweh that speaks in Yahweh's name. This prophet comes from among the brothers of Israel, so among the 12 tribes that come from 12 brothers. And this prophet will be like Moses. Okay, pretty good so far. Let's have a look. Many of the Christians, they say that this prophecy refers to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Yes, that's correct. Jesus is the prophet like Moses. In fact, it specifically tells us in the book of Deuteronomy what it means to be a prophet like Moses. So it says in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 10 and 11, it says, And there has not yet arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom Yahweh knew face to face in regard to all the signs and wonders which Yahweh sent him to do in the land of Egypt. So that really uh, fits Jesus quite well. Jesus is the prophet like Moses because he spoke directly to God. Muhammad didn't. Uh, and he also did many signs and wonders. Muhammad did none. So we can see that this is a very good prophecy about Jesus. And when we ask them, that how does this prophecy refer to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? And they tell us that here the prophecy says, I shall raise them for profit from among thy brethren like unto thee. The prophet to come should be like Moses, peace be upon him. And the similarities the Christians give between Jesus and Moses, peace be upon them, is that Yes. Prophet Jesus and Prophet Moses peace be upon them. Both of them, they were Jews. And both Prophet Jesus and Prophet Moses, peace be upon them, both of them were prophets of God. If these two are the only similarities for the fulfillment of the prophecy, then all the prophets mentioned in the Bible, after Moses, peace be upon him, fulfill the prophecy. Really? I can think of a few more than that, mate. I mean, Jesus performed many miracles just like Moses. Muhammad performed none. Jesus came with a message directly from God the Father. Muhammad received his revelation through the angel Gabriel, supposedly. Not only that, Jesus fed the people of Israel bread in the wilderness. That sounds a lot like Moses to me, mate. The Quran specifically says that Muhammad did not hear directly from God. It specifically says that in Surah chapter 4, verse 163 to 164, it says this, 
We have sent the inspiration, as we sent it to Noah and the messengers after him, we sent inspiration to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, to Jesus, Job, Jonah, Aaron, and Solomon, and to David we gave the Psalms. Of some messages we have already told thee the story, of others we have not. But to Moses, Allah spoke directly, it says here. Moses spoke to God face to face. Moses spoke to God directly. That's what it says in the Bible, in the Torah, and that's what it means to be a prophet like Moses. Somebody who speaks to God face to face and somebody who does miracles. That's not Muhammad. In fact, if we analyze this prophecy does not befit anyone better than the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. No, that's impossible. It's impossible for the prophet mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, to be Muhammad because he fails the two basic criteria. Number one, you need to be a prophet like Moses. That is, you need to be a prophet who speaks directly, face to face, with God. And secondly, you need to do miracles. The Quran, many times in the Quran, people come to Muhammad and say, give us a sign, show us a miracle. And Muhammad says, I have only been sent as a warner. He didn't do any miracles. And for those who think that he split the moon, go read the passage in context. He's talking about the last hour. And if you read the notes in the study Quran, which is a Muslim Quran put together by Muslim scholars, they clearly point out that it's talking about the last hour. And it's saying in the last days, the moon will split asunder. Go look at the passage for yourself. It's, it's pretty clear, I think. So Muhammad didn't do any miracles and he didn't speak to God face to face, but also he wasn't from among the brethren of Israel, right? I mean, Muslims try to say, well, you know, the brother of Israel must be Ishmael because Ishmael was uh, uh, Israel's uh, brother. No, Ishmael was Israel's uncle. There's a big difference. But secondly, in context, it's specifically talking about Israelites. If you just look at the chapter before, chapter 17, Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 15, it says this, You shall surely set a king over you whom Yahweh your God chooses, one from among your brothers. You shall set as king over yourselves. You may not put a foreigner over yourselves who is not your brother. You see, when it says among your brothers, it's exactly the same in the Hebrew as in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. When it says that, it's referring to the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel come from 12 brothers, the sons of Israel. And so all the Israelites are brothers. And so Yahweh is saying that the prophet will come from among you the people of Israel, not Ishmael, who was Israel's uncle. Okay, that's not what the passage is saying. Let's get back to this Azakia Nike. If we analyze Prophet Moses and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them, both of them were born naturally. They had a mother and they had a father. But Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was born miraculously without any male intervention. He had a mother, but he had no father. And it is mentioned in the Quran about his birth in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 47. It's also mentioned in the Bible in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 1, verse number 18. And the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 1, verse number 35, that he was born miraculously without any male intervention. So if we analyze, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is like Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. And Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, is unlike Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. This guy honestly believes that because Muhammad had a mother and a father, and Moses had a mother and a father, that means he's a prophet like Moses. I mean, this is ridiculous. Everybody except for Adam and Jesus has a mother and father. It's got nothing to do with whether or not you're a prophet, and it's got nothing to do with whether or not you're a prophet like Moses. Furthermore, we know, that Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Moses, peace be upon them, both of them, they were married and they had children. But according to the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not married and he had no children. So Muhammad, peace be upon him, is like Moses, peace be upon him, and Jesus, peace be upon him, is unlike Moses, peace be upon him. Whether or not somebody is married is irrelevant as to whether or not somebody is a prophet like Moses. People all over the world, all throughout history have been married. It's also worth noting that Muhammad had many wives, but Moses only ever had one 
wife. That's an interesting factor. Further, when we read the Quran and the Bible, we come to know that Moses, peace be upon him, he had a natural death. Same like Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He too had a natural death. It's worth noting that we as Christians believe that Jesus did truly die. But it's really irrelevant as to whether or not he's a prophet like Moses again. However, the Quran, even though I reject the Quran, the Quran does say that Jesus said, blessed was the day that I was born, blessed was the day that I died and the day that I rise again from the dead. So even the Quran admits that Jesus died. Furthermore, Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, they were worldly kings. That means they could give the punishment of life and death to whoever they wanted. They had that power. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 18, verse number 36. He says, my kingdom is not of this world. Moses wasn't a king. He couldn't just order somebody's death. Muhammad did that, but Moses certainly didn't do that. And he had no power to do that. He could only do what God told him to do. But Muhammad ordered people's deaths all over the place. If anybody wrote poetry against him, Muhammad would order their death. It's in the earliest biographies of Muhammad. So that's a difference between Muhammad and Moses, not a similarity. And furthermore, Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, both of them, they bought a new law. But Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he did not bring a new law. He came to confirm the previous law. As what is mentioned clearly in the Quran, in Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 6, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, the son of Mary, he said to the children of Israel, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, I have been sent as a messenger to you, confirming the law what has come before me and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come whose name shall be Ahmad, which is another name of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's totally wrong. We reject the Quran. We go by what the Bible says. And Jesus, in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verse 34, Jesus says this. He says, A new command I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. So Jesus did bring a new command, and he fulfilled the Old Testament law. And that's why we as Christians don't follow it anymore. You can watch one of my other videos. I'll put a link to in the description about that. It's also mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 157. It says, they follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, which is mentioned in the scriptures, the law and the gospel. So when we read the Quran, it says that it will be prophesied in the scriptures, in the law and the gospel about the coming of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been prophesied in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18. And further it's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19, that anyone who does not hearken to his words, I will require of him. Some translations say, I will take revenge. That means anyone who does not follow this messenger to come, Almighty God will take revenge from these people. You see, the Quran makes these kinds of claims, but it doesn't give you the evidence to back it up. The Quran claims that Muhammad is in the Torah, but he's not. The Quran claims that Muhammad is in the gospel, but he's not. When you read the Torah and when you read the gospel, it's very clear that Muhammad is not mentioned there anywhere. So this guy's been totally debunked. Muhammad is not in the Torah and is certainly not in the gospel either. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up, hit the bell notification button. I'll see you in the comment section and you'll see me in my next video.